We got six classes in Tiny Tina's Wonderlands at launch. And while you have to stick with the class you pick at the start, there's also multi-classing. So pretty early on in the main story, you can also pick a second class which you can switch at any time near the end of the game. So it's overall good to know what each class excels at so you can pick the right combination for you. So we'll run down everything you need to know in this video with timestamps for each class so you can jump around if you want. I want to thank 2K for sponsoring the video. Totally check out Wonderlands via the special link in the video description. And now let's start with my personal favorite, the spell shot. Every class in Wonderlands has two action skills and you start out with one and then on level seven so very early on you can use your second one. The spell shot starts with polymorph which turns an enemy of your choice into a floating sheep for a pretty long time like I was actually surprised by the duration of this spell so it's totally smart to use this on badass enemies so you basically got a free kill without them able to do anything back. Also, by shooting the sheep, you can get multiple free spells. So if you have a powerful one equipped, it will just randomly appear to very easily take care of the enemy. So yeah, if you have a rapid fire weapon, you can even have multiple free spells appear, which is kind of crazy. Some enemies are immune to the effect though. If you then use the polymorph, you do some regular damage and also instantly cast the spell you currently have equipped free of charge. So you can totally go crazy with this and use the polymorph first to cast the free spell and then immediately use the regular spell directly afterwards to in my case have two of these meteors appear to nuke the health bar of the enemy extremely fast. As you might know spells in Wonderlands replaced the grenades from Borderlands with the big difference being that spells recharge over time instead of being revealed from ammo pickups. There are many spells you can buy or loot and while every class only has one spell slot in their left hand with the second action skill from the spell shot which you again unlock at level 7 you can equip a second spell which you then use with the regular action skill button so they can keep an eye out for two amazing spells and use them at the same time every class has a class feat which is basically a passive bonus and for the spell shot it's called a spell weaving which means that after casting a spell or reloading a weapon, you get one stack which you will see on your XP bar and this will further increase the damage of your spells. But there are also skills like Mage Armor where you regenerate a ward which the shield in this game every time you gain a stack of the spell weaving you can also increase your fire rate in combination with this passive bonus. Other skills you can expect in the skill 3 increase spell damage and crit chance. But if you prefer to use weapons, they can also go for extra gun damage with for example the magic bullet spell where a portion of all the bonuses you receive is also applied to guns. The final skill, the capstone, is about crit chance and how it has a chance to instantly reset all spell cooldowns so you should be able to spam spells which is kind of crazy. So the best stats for this class are dexterity increasing the crit chance or intelligence which increases the spell cooldown rate. I personally went with the raised by elves background as the decreases to constitution doesn't really matter while you then still increase your crit chance. And by the way, before we continue, of course, drop down in the comments which class you're going to play. And if you like the video, then leaving a like on it would really help me out. And subscribe because we got way more Wonderlands content coming your way. Next up is the Berserker, which as the name suggests, is all about frost. And this is a really nice effect that slows enemies, deals damage over time, and can also completely freeze the target in place so you can very easily take them out. With the first action skill, Dreadwind, you zoom out and see your character spin around very rapidly to deal frost damage, which works surprisingly well in groups of enemies, especially against melee targets, as they will just stay close to you and not run away, which might be annoying when you do this when facing ranged enemies. Fun fact is, by the way, that you can jump during this ability, so if the enemy is standing higher up, they can still reach them. But still be careful though, because when you use this against bosses, you will become a very easy target. So having extra health regen or damage reduction is nice, which you can for example get with the old ways skill. The second action skill is called Veral Surge, which is all about finishing enemies off, because if you namely kill an enemy with this ability, the cooldown resets, 
so you can immediately do it again. So maybe you already guessed it, but the tactic with this is to get non-boss enemies around the 20% health and then use the ability so you can constantly chain it. And this also works really well with the passive skill Rage of the Ancients, which gives a frost damage bonus to your attacks for 15 seconds after activating an action skill. So if you then chain Feral Surge, you can constantly have this frost damage increase active and there are certain skills that enhance this passive effect even more like Instinct, which increases the reload speed and weapon swap speed during this time. Now the big downside is that if you miss Feral Surge or do not kill a target, then you will have to wait for a pretty long time before you can do the ability again. But yeah, when you got it down, it simply means that it's amazing for a Frost-focused build. And there are skills that can enhance the Frost playstyle even more, like Ancestral Frost or another one called Icebreaker. But the Zerker in Berserker, of course, means that it's also a great class for if you want to be up close and personal, thanks to the Unyielding, which lets you regenerate a percentage of your missing health. And there are quite a lot of other tanking skills in the skill tree too. Now if I had to pick a background I would go for village idiot. Because the other backgrounds will decrease one of the stats that are handy for this class. But only if you got other picks for backgrounds drop it down in the comments down below. Stablemancer is all about the improved melee and critical hits. We start with the ghost blade action skill which lets you summon a purple spinning dagger on a selected location. Staying there for a decent amount of time and hitting every enemy that stands close so it's great against multiple melee targets that want to charge you you cannot get hit by the dagger by the way so just stay in range so the enemies go towards you and take damage it's mostly great against bosses though when they're casting certain abilities or just stand still often so you can really get a lot of hits in and when they get out of range you can lure them towards the blades by standing close to it it's not really ideal against ranged targets that stand far away from each other because you want to hit a high health target or as many smaller enemies as possible. The other extra skill from the shadows is pretty similar to Flex Fadeaway from Borderlands 3. You namely turn invisible so enemies cannot spot you, will run past you and also during this time all your hits are crits. So yes, doing an insane spell like that Meteor I of course showed you before is pretty wild in combination with this From the Shadows action skill. But also all your other hits like gun damage are crits during the 8 seconds that this skill is active. The only downside is that all the crits deal 25% less damage. But I personally would argue that this is totally the better skill for the Stabomancer. As there are way more options, like you can also use this in combination with melee hits. So every hit you do is a crit. And you can further enhance the melee playstyle with skills like follow up. Where if you deal gun damage to an enemy, you increase the damage of your next melee attack with multiple stacks. The Stabomancer can also increase movement speed a lot and again is focused on those critical hits. The class feat passive is just a flat 30% crit chance boost making it amazing as a second class if you want to play around with the crits. It can also increase the crit damage even more with certain skills like sneak attack. Village Idiot can be great as a starting background or going for the raised by elves with even more crit chance seems like a solid choice as well. There are multiple classes in Wonderlands with pets, starting with the Spore Warden who got a little mushroom friend that likes to dance when you interact with it. So in my experience it's not that great at first hitting enemies with low damage but once you got the Spore Cloud skill unlocked it can be a pretty nice tank taking the attention away from you and also hitting all enemies close by with quite a lot of poison damage over time. So just tag an enemy and the Mushroom Man will launch itself towards that target quickly doing the poison cloud as well which has a pretty short cooldown so overall it's a pretty nice pet. In terms of extra skills the spore warning got its signature barrage where you grab a bow and fire seven arrows at the same time that can also ricochet twice between nearby enemies. It also has multiple charges so you can spam it. Only in my experience early on in the game the damage wasn't that great but it does scale with increases to gun damage. So maybe at max level it can more easily get the job done. Also when encountering higher health targets with this ability it's smart to stand close so you hit all the arrows onto that 
enemy. The second extra skill, Blizzard, is already powerful though from the beginning. You summon three Frost Cyclones for a pretty long duration that can stick to multiple targets and also find a new victim if the other enemy already died from the Frost damage over time. I found this especially powerful against bosses as this ability will just stay on them and deal a ton of damage which you can also increase with ability damage with the skill affinity for example. Next to more skills that increase your mushroom friend you also got increases for gun damage like eagle eye and there are also kill skills like bounty for the hunt which increases the action skill cooldown rate for a brief duration so you can spam the tornadoes more often. With the capstone play the angles your gun critical hits have a chance to ricochet which can be nice and dexterity and attunement are the best stats for this class so going with the raised by elves background seems like the best option. And thanks to multi-classing you can have two pets with you at the same time if you for example also play the graveborn. Tag an enemy and then the damage will shoot its bolts while the mushroom will fight it from up close. It's pretty cool. Also what is unique about the companion from the graveborn is that whenever you cast a spell this damage will shoot an extra projectile towards the enemy dealing some nice extra damage damage. So if you have a spell with multiple charges so that you can do very rapidly then your companion will deal more damage too. Dire Sacrifice is the first action skill from the Graveborn where you sacrifice some of your current health to deal dark magic damage and apply the dark magic status effect which is basically a leech so you get some health back in return. Also the more health you got so when you activate this ability so basically the more health you sacrifice the higher the damage of this skill and it's just really great for clearing out groups. We also got Reaper of Bones. This fully heals the Graveborn and then gives you a lot of leech efficiency so more health back from leech effects plus your dark magic damage is increased. Well, the twist is that you do lose health per second, so that's basically the duration of this ability, and then if you die, you instead become invulnerable. Restore some health, and then the effect ends. So this skill totally requires better gear, and likely a higher level character as well, but it will be interesting if you can like extend the duration by just getting a ton of health back. In short though, this class, as you maybe already noticed, is all about the lifesteal playstyle. There are skills that enhance this even more, like Mortal Vessel, where the maximum health and leech efficiency is increased. But if you want to focus on the damage of your minion and other summons, then you can increase that too. There's even a Dark Hydra skill, which lets you spawn Hydras on a kill, which will then help you out with a pretty cool effect. Spells can also come in the dark magic element, so you can also enhance the effectiveness of those spells with this class or how often you can use these spells. The Filled Monk totally seems like the best option in terms of background, by the way, reducing the stats that you don't really need, while giving both intelligence and wisdom, which are both very handy. The final class is the Clawbringer, also with a pet, a wyvern, that I don't think you can interact with as it will just continuously fly away and as you might expect this drake will breathe fire on enemies so it's mostly great against enemies with that red health bar. In terms of action skills we got cleansing flames where we zoom out and slam a hammer onto the enemies followed by a fiery explosion, clunk, Pretty satisfying if you then instantly kill the enemies as well. But it's sadly not as good on high health single targets. So you really want to save it for a group of smaller enemies. It has a pretty short cooldown but you can lower that even more by spending points into the dedication skill. Or there are skills to overall enhance your fire damage like the dragon aura. So you can really build around this element with the clawbringer class if you want. The second action skill is called the storm dragon's judgment which is also a lot of fun to use as you basically throw a Mjolnir like hammer onto an enemy which already deals quite a lot of damage. It then stays in that spot for 8 seconds, dealing shock damage over time to everyone in the area. And enemies are stupid enough to just like walk into this effect, which is nice. But if there are no enemies around, you can also recall the hammer early with a chance to deal damage or even kill enemies on the way back to your hand. And if you do this, you also refund a part of the ability cooldown. So there are multiple ways to use it, and as you might expect, instead of the fire... 
you can also build a clawbringer to focus on the lightning damage to make that element even better. But there are also skills that make you more tanky by increasing the ward capacity, for example, with Radiance. And for the background, once again, Village Idiot can be nice here as strength is recommended for the Clawbringer. But Filled Monk, I would argue, can also be great to get the increases for the status effect damage. Totally again, let me know which class you're gonna play in the comments down below. A like on the video would really help me out and subscribe for way more Wonderlands content because we're just getting started here. You can already watch another Wonderlands video by clicking on the screen. For now though, I will speak to you in the next one. Goodbye.